Lisa TV presents in three, two, one. Dateline Schools with your host, Terry Harrington. All this week on Dateline Schools, we're learning what it takes to become a host family for a foreign exchange student in one of our high schools here in St. Clair County. Tell us out about it. My special guest is a community coordinator for the Council on Educational Travel USA, Pat Loftus. And Pat, yesterday you gave us a good description of what it takes to become a host family and that whole process. What about on the flip side for the students? What's the process they go through? Okay, they probably determine early on that they do want to be an exchange student. They would have to um, answer quite a few uh, questions about what they would expect coming over here. They, they fill out a profile. Um, they, they write down like the, what their five top interests are and secondary interests. And I'm sure it's quite competitive in some of the countries. Uh, they look over all the applicants and then they determine which ones will be allowed to be exchange students. So then how do you match that up? How do you kind of like play matchmaker between the, the host family, the potential host family and the student? That's relatively easy. I find out what the interests are of the host family. Uh, I'll find out what their kids like, uh, what the parents are like. Uh, I'll also find out what the schools have available for them. And then I'll examine the profiles that are out there and I generally narrow it down to possibly two or three students that I think would be great matches for their family. How, how does the language barrier work with this thing? Okay, several uh, students uh, might struggle at the beginning, especially the ones from the Far East. Um, it could be the, uh, the ones from South Korea, Japan. Uh, they would struggle quite a bit. The, the kids from uh, Northern Europe and Central Europe usually are are quite fluent when they get over here. Now, there isn't a requirement for the host family to be able to speak the language of their, their uh, student, is it? Absolutely not. The number one reason that these students come over here is to earn the, learn the English language. And uh, so they don't have to know anything about uh, the language that the kid speaks at home. So most of those students have a little, at least a little bit of English before they even come here. Yeah, they have to take a SLEP test and it shows their proficiency in several categories of English. And our requirement uh, is 52 that they have to score at least a 52 on their SLEP test. How, how fun it's going to be though for those kids to, to live and, and learn that way. Absolutely, especially going through a, a pennant race with the Detroit Tigers and the uh, current success of the Detroit Lions. They usually get um, quite interested in what's going on in this area. More tomorrow for Dayline Schools, I'm Terry Harrington.